Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So we're going to be looking at VBA, or so that's going to be the topic of good choice for this video, and we're going to be using a VBA to create a macro in which we can copy and transpose uh, some data that we have in our worksheet. Uh, in order to do this, will be it'll be a small introduction to using arrays, uh, but as you'll see as we step through this, um, there's a bit of a setup we need to do with some of the code in terms of referencing to stuff, but the whole process is really simple. Uh, just to give a visual, so you can see see on the right hand side of the screen here at the moment we've got this basic table which literally gives us a date going along the top here so this is a growing table so obviously you could get to like the 11th of November and then there'll be some information to store for each city there and you can also see in column A we've then also got the cities and what we want to do uh, even though the data in this scenario is being recorded in this format what we need to do is we need to get all this data and have it transposed like so uh, so we have the format that you now see below. So we've got date in this column, and then you can see we've got the cities uh, along the horizontal there. So you might want to change the format or so sort of say the layout of the data for many different reasons, such as if you're trying to put it into a chart or just maybe different presentation uh, preferences. But obviously rather than doing this manually, we want to do this using VBA. And we've also got another video coming up in which we're gonna show you how you can also use this same process but have the columns reordered as well. And in my experience of using VBA, this is something that comes back to time and time again, where we need them to take, uh, like I say, a set of data, maybe do the transpose piece as well, but ultimately trying to rearrange and reformat the cells or columns that we have and therefore we want to have on our output. So what we'll just do is get rid of this and we'll step straight into it. So the first things we're gonna do is we need to make a couple of references. So we need to obviously reference this sheet, so sheet number one, and we've then got sheet number two. So kind of like the source data, and then our output will be presented into sheet number two. So if you haven't already, you need to open up your uh, VBA developer window, and we're gonna just insert a module. You can see I've already got two modules here as it is, but if you haven't got a blank and error or an empty module ready to use, then just go into insert, module and that's how you can get it on the right left hand side here once just double click to open it up and then you're ready and good to go so the first thing we're going to do is just make references to our worksheets you don't have to do this it's just good practice and it makes it a lot simpler i find as well when you're reading through the code and understanding what it's trying to do so subroutine is just going to be we'll call it transpose uh, table and I have on purpose misspelt table there, uh, just a personal preference of mine, just to make the words a bit shorter there. So the first thing we need to do is go dim, and we call it worksheet one, so WS1 as worksheet. And then because it's also a worksheet as well, we're then gonna do WS2 as worksheet as well. Um, for those not familiar, you might you, you could, your preference might then be to dim WS2 as worksheet uh, below. So either, adding a comma and then at the end here, or this one here, works exactly the same. My personal preference is I just tend to group things. So anything what's gonna be a worksheet, I'll try and group together on the same row and the same for like integers or anything else. I just I just find personally it helps give it, keep everything together when you're referencing back. So the new one we're gonna be adding is dim and we're gonna put call it my array. And simply we're gonna be storing this as a variant. Uh, so a variant just being uh, obviously varying format that you can be used. I'm by no means an expert on using arrays or obviously the different ways of storing them. I obviously just know how to do this and a few other processes with them. So by all means, if you want to get more detail, give it a Google search and I'm sure you'll soon find everything that you need to know. But for the purpose of this video, uh, like I say, you'll be covering off everything as much as you need to know it uh, or is in as much detail as you need to understand this process. So the next thing we're gonna do is we need to make a couple of references. So as you'll see of our data, we've got a, a number of rows and we've also got a number of columns. But because what we could do is we could just set a, a fixed range. So we've got literally from cell A1 through to K6. That would work, but obviously in an ideal scenario, we don't want to limit ourselves just to this range. We want people to still be able to add more cities to this, and we want people to continually add dates. And when new information is added, we then want to make sure that we are picking up that newly added information each time this is run. So to do that, we're gonna be entering a couple of dynamic references for row and column. So we're just gonna go dim, and I'm gonna call this last row as integer. And then I'll go last column 
as integer as well. So obviously we only need to get the last column, so column K or the last row, column six, because obviously we're always gonna have that same starting point because the data is always, for our example, gonna be starting in cell A1. So that's two parts there. And then the last thing we're gonna do is just go dim start cells as range. So I just now said we're always gonna be starting from A1, but I've just brought this in here as well. Just one is a helpful reference when we're doing our dynamic ranges. And also it'd be beneficial to you as well if your table for argument sake starts in row seven rather than um, A1. You can obviously can still use the code that we're looking at here today. So now that we've defined all of those variables, we now need to set them. So for our first one, we're gonna do set WS1 as uh, this workbook dot sheets sheet one. So we'll set to referring to sheet number one. Obviously you might have actual sheet names. Oh, and I've put as rather than equals. So there you go, there's my mistake. So you might have different names, but I'm just stuck with a basic sheet one and obviously sheet two. Set WS2 equals, you did it again, uh, this workbook dot sheets. And this one is gonna be sheet number two. And lastly, we're gonna set our starting cell because that's a range. So we're gonna go set uh, start cell equals, and we can now use our cell our references to the sheet. So it's WS1 dot uh, range, and for us it's gonna be A1. But obviously if your table doesn't start on A1, you can put whatever range it starts in for you. So the next thing we need to do is do our defining of our last row and last column. So in essence, our, we need a piece of code that will say, okay, count how many columns there are, and then also count how many rows there are. So we're gonna do last row first. So last row equals, and we're gonna go uh, WC, WS1, because obviously we want worksheet number one, dot cells. And you might have seen us do this in previous videos. So for some of you, this might be familiar, but if you're new to using dynamic rate or finding dyna dynamically the last row or column, then this is how you do it. So WS1, dot rows, dot count and then start cell. And it might be easier for me just to type, the, type this out and then try and explain this um, after I've done that. Start column and then uh, dot end and then go Excel up. Oh, if I can spell it, Excel up dot row. Yeah, and it seems to have liked that. And then last column is gonna equal WS1 again dot cells. Open brackets, start cell dot row and then ws1 dot columns dot count dot end uh, excel this time to left uh, dot column uh, is that right? yeah, dot column perfect so what we've basically done here is all the ws ones you can see is referring to our worksheet sheet one just so everything is constantly being referred back to there you could, if you wanted to, it might be clever, you could do a with statement, what I'd probably normally do, so you don't need to keep making references to WS1. But for the purpose of this video, I think it hopefully, well, the intended purpose is by leaving them in, it, like it just makes it a bit simpler maybe to read on the screen. So the first part is last row. So all we're simply gonna do, um, and obviously it looks a lot more complicated than it is, is it's obviously all WS1 is referring to sheet number one. And then if you try and break it down, you say, right, we're just trying to look at this section here. What it's gonna do, so when you use the cells reference, you'd first say your uh, cell rows. So if you're trying to refer to a particular cell, you say, okay, what row is that cell in? And then what column is that cell in, uh, separated by this column? Uh, column, not column, sorry, comma. Uh, so all we're doing is say we want to, for this cell, we literally want to count the number of rows. So obviously just rows.count on the sheet. And we want to do that count within um, the start cell column. So we know our start cell is in, is in cell A1. Therefore, it's gonna literally count the number of rows in column A, as simple as that. And in order for it to do a count, all it's gonna do is it's gonna go literally to the end of the data, so find the next blank row, and then go up. So in theory, what it's doing is, you know, if you do like control down, it's in essence, it's just doing that really to identify that the last row is column six. If we had a piece of a set of data in the scenario where we maybe had another city here, so um, uh, let's say Glasgow, I don't know why it took me so long to think of another city. What would happen in this scenario is it wouldn't identify that column eight 
or row A was the last in our data set because there is a gap here. So that's just one thing to bear in mind, obviously, when you're using this process. And then exactly the same thing happens for last column in the sense that obviously it's going to, if you look at this one particular section here, it's going to say, okay, start in our, um, in our start cell. So obviously start here. So in row number one, because our reference is row number one or A1. And then all it's going to do is count the number of columns. And it's literally going to do what seems a bit confusing here because it says XL to left, but it's going to literally again, just go to the last row in that or last cell in that data set and obviously give us the uh, column number. So last row will give us the number six and last column will give us uh, the number uh, number 11 because K is the 11th column. And I think they'll probably explain that uh, probably not uh, very clearly, but hopefully at least you understand that it works. Or in the most basic of senses, if you copy this as it is, then you will have what you need. It's one of those ones where sometimes you don't need to know exactly how something works, you just know that it does work. So as long as you've got that, that's the main part. And I think we've done the majority of our groundwork here. So the next part we need to do is to set our array. So this part where we had here, and this is very simple. Oh, we, well, this bit's probably not too simple. Uh, I've got to probably try and explain this again. So we're gonna do my array equals so we're basically using the last row and column to give us a dynamic range. So my array, this part we're now doing, is literally just storing all of that information into a simple range that can be stored as the array. So we're gonna go ws1.range, open brackets. So we're gonna start in our starting cell. So this is the first part of our range. And then the second, oh, if I spelled cell correctly. And then the second part is then going to be ws one dot cells and then we're going to go last row comma last column and then close, double close dot values but this one is going to be with a do like that so obviously it might help just to write this on here so when you do a range in um in vba you go range open brackets and then you can see that you've got your two references so you could either you could either go uh, a one two a5 obviously that would be a simple range there or when you use cells obviously you can do uh, cells and if you're referring to a particular cell or one particular cell you'd first put the row reference so you might have row one and then row number five and this would refer to in column uh, or what row number one of column five so that would be uh, e so it refer to this particular cell what we're doing here with this range uh, calculation is we're literally saying the first part here is literally what is the first cell. So the first cell in our range is always going to be A1 for us because our starting cell. Then the comma indicates that we're now talking about what is the last cell in our range. So for us, we want to say it's this one here in K6. So for that, we can easily use our predefined last row. So it's going to say, okay, we'll go down to row six. So we go there and then the, the column aspect of that cell is then going to be the last one. So then go across to column K and then obviously it's identified that this is our dynamic range. And if a more data is en en entered either to the column or the row, it's also going to update to that desired spot. And the reason I put value two here is if you do value, it copies your formatting as well. Whereas I'm not too interested in copying the formatting. So I'll just put the number two there. So we're only going to take the actual cell contents. So this is our array now stored. And the very, well, you think it'd be the hardest part, but the simplest part is actually doing the transpose. So all we need to do now is go my array. So referring to that exact same uh, variable, if I could spell it correctly, my array equals, and we're gonna simply go worksheet function dot transpose, open brackets, my array, close brackets, and that's it. So all we've done is my array has first been stored, we've said what range should be stored in the array. And then the next part, we're kind of overwriting that array by basically saying my array now equals your array having been transposed. And that's it. So all we now need to do is to go and paste this into sheet two. So when we're working with um, arrays, normally you could obviously copy this data and then you might go copy and then go to sheet two and then just do paste and it would exp expand all the data. 
what we need to do with the array is we actually need to predefine the entire range that we want to paste to. Uh, if not, it will only paste so much data or it will over overspill if we put too much. And we can simply do this just by referring again to our last row and columns to give us obviously the extent of um, how much we need to paste in or how big our range is, to put it simply. So if we go ws2.range open brackets. So we know the first cell is going to be uh, A1 within sheet two. So what we need to do is go A1 and then comma to go onto the, the last cell within the range. And for us, it's going to be ws2.cell open brackets. And we now kind of need to spin this round. So because we've transposed our data, what was our last row is now the last column, if that makes sense. And what was the last column is now the last row because you imagine everything's been flipped around. So this is why I'm doing it kind of backwards as it would look. So last row for us is now gonna be the last column. And the uh, column index is gonna be last row close brackets dot value equals my array. Oh, and I've done something wrong there. So let's have a look. Let's go range, open brackets, open brackets, close up. There should have been double close brackets at the end here. Go into that. And this should now be the extent of our code. So it's a lot of content in terms of obviously in terms of actually putting that in and explaining it. I've got to say, looking at the time, I think I've been going for nearly 20 minutes already. So apologies for that. But you can see that the actual code itself is is quite basic, really. There isn't too much of it. So what should happen now? So if we run this code simply by clicking within the subroutine and hitting F5 you can see that our data has now been transposed over. So our starting position in sheet one was here, and you can now see in sheet two, our data has been transposed over for us. Obviously the date format has not been kept there, so what we can do is go short date, but you could obviously build that into your macro if you so desired. If we now just delete this, go back to our sheet and let's add another couple of cities. So let's say city one, city two, uh, city three, and let's add some more dates in here as well. So let's say take this up to the, what we've got, 13, go to the maybe 14, move across here so I can see what I'm doing. And let's just copy all this data across here, like so. And then we'll do the same here. Let's just copy all this down as well. I think I went down three. Perfect. So we've added new data. So obviously our macro should now pick that up because we've got dynamic ranges. Back to our subroutine, hit F5, and you can see it has now obviously picked up those new cities and the new data. If we uh, obviously change this to a short date. Yep, so we can now see we've got data also for the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th of November. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with doing that manually, but hopefully this now gives you a dynamic solution to obviously remove that manual process and automate uh, the transposing of data using VBA. If you did enjoy that video, please do make sure you give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as there'll be a follow up video uh, coming on very soon uh, following this video in which we'll look at how you can use the same process, but with another simple couple of lines of code, you can actually reorder these columns uh, super quickly. So do make sure you're subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you're notified as soon as that video comes out. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.